All right, first off, I'm gonna introduce our presenter. Uh, Dan Garfield has an awesome demo planned for you today, so get excited. Um, he's a full stack engineer, our VP of marketing, uh, Kubernaut and all around technology enthusiast, and he's our chief evangelist, if that's not enough on his plate. <laughs> he does a little bit of everything and he's an excellent presenter. So with that, I will pass it off to Dan and we'll get him to share his screen here. Thank you very much, Taryn, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Thank you already for joining. And um, I've got to say, this is a special day. Uh, today um, is our last day in this office, which uh, this means that you today are watching the very last webinar we'll film, we'll, we'll film here. <laughs> we'll film here. Part of that is because as some of you may have seen in uh, you know, TechCrunch this morning, we actually just closed another round of funding. So um, we're gonna be moving into a new office, which is very exciting. But all of that is, Certainly exciting, but it is um, not today's topic. So we're going to jump right in and talk about uh, Canary. And I'm going to end this poll. As we as we uh, talk, um, there is a Q&A button. So feel free to use that Q&A button to add questions as we go along. And uh, we'll look at those probably near the end and, um, and answer those. And it uh, looks like from what I'm seeing in the poll, just about everybody uh, is in some process of adopting Kubernetes. Um, lots of people in production already, about 30% already in production, 30% in test environments, uh, close to 30% uh, planning on using it very soon, and then just a handful of people um, with, without any plans. Looks like three people total don't, don't have any plans right now to, uh, to use Kubernetes yet. All right, so let's jump in here and uh, I'll share my screen. And I've got the whiteboard um, so we can jump over and uh, do some of that if we need to. All right. So um, as we get started here, we're going to talk just a little bit about kind of what Canary is. And can everybody see my screen OK? Uh, my chat has disappeared. Yep, I can see it, Dan. It, OK. All right. As long as you've got it, then I assume everybody else does. Okay. Yeah, I see. Right. They're saying yes in the chat box as well. <laughs> All right, so um, let's talk about Canary for a second. The idea of Canary is that you want to have a new version of your application that you're going to deploy, and you want to give it a percentage of traffic. If it works, we're going to give it 100%. And there are lots of different ways of approaching Canary, and there are lots of, um, I mean, it's not like there's some foundation that owns the term Canary, so sometimes I see it used in, in various different ways. But uh, the canary we're talking about today, this is kind of the criteria. So this is kind of what it looks like. You start with a prod version, a production version of your application that we're going to call blue, uh, the blue version, the prod version. And all of your users, they're getting that blue version. They're getting that blue traffic. And the canary is going to be the new version of our application. So we're going to deploy the canary version here. It's in yellow. And uh, once we've done that, we're going to start giving a portion of traffic to that canary. Now, when I say a portion, it could be a percentage of the traffic. It could be a subset of users. Uh, I know a lot of companies will have their canary version go to all of their employees. Um, it could be a specific geo. It could be in one, one location. Uh, you can actually base uh, that portion control off of just about anything you can think of. Uh, but we're going to give it a, a portion of traffic, that Canary version, and then we're going to monitor it. And is, if it's working, we're going to increase the traffic. So you can see the, the, the portion of users that are getting the Canary version is kind of going up here. The portion that's getting the prod version is going down. And if everything looks good, we're going to send all the traffic to the Canary version to complete it. Now, um, you can think of this, this is a little bit similar maybe to a rolling update. But the difference is that, uh, is that you're, you have a lot more control over the portion of people that get the Canary version. And we have a health check as part of the process, whereas a normal um, you know, rollout doesn't necessarily have that kind of, um, that kind of health check associated with it. So uh, that's maybe one difference. And if you guys uh, have any questions about the difference between this and a regular rollout versus a blue green versus uh, you know, or red, black, or any of these other deployment strategies, feel free to ask, and um, we'll address that a little bit closer to the end. 
So that's basically what we're talking about when we're talking about a canary version. Um, and once we're done, our canary version becomes the new prod version, right? It turns blue. And then we would move it over to the left. And if we want to introduce a new version, it would come up as the new canary version, right? And so the whole idea here is that we want to build an assembly line, right? And this is, uh, this is how this, um, this whole process is engineered. And, and really, like, just take a step back and look at kind of Kubernetes and Helm and all of these tools. They're all really cool and we're all really excited about them because you can do neat things. But at the end of the day, the whole goal is you want to be as productive as possible. You want to deliver software as fast and efficiently and as, as, as high a quality level as you can possibly do. And to do that, we basically need to treat software development like and deployment like an assembly line. Uh, and so that's what we're doing here with Canary is we're rolling out these versions one by one, we're stacking them over each other and that allows us to be incredibly efficient. So um, we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce maybe a couple of technologies here. Hopefully everybody's heard of them. One of them that we're gonna use is called Helm. And Helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. And the idea is that you can have, uh, basically, um, if, you're, if you're deploying an application on top of Kubernetes, you might have a Go app, you might have a Postgres database, a Redis you know, uh, messaging queue, you might have a Node app, you might have a .NET app. And all of these things need to work together in order for your application to function, in order for your end users to actually get something that works. They need all of this stuff to run together. And so the idea here is that we want to, uh, is that we want to package our Kubernetes application and it can call in dependencies. And those dependencies can be managed by other teams, right? Um, and uh, this is gonna give us a lot of flexibility in our application. And one of the layers for this, um, for this demo today that we're doing is to bring in Helm and use it as our package manager while marrying in Istio, um, which is gonna handle our, our networking traffic. Now, if you're not familiar with Istio, I'll give the, of an incredibly brief introduction, um, but uh, the, the, canary, the Istio is basically a networking layer that works. Um, it's not exclusively on top of Kubernetes, but the primary target is Kubernetes. And it allows us to do a lot more powerful rollout strategies than you would be able to do with a vanilla Kubernetes. Um, and I'll talk to that in just a second. 